This is the B-2 Spirit, designed as the tip of the spear in strategic bombing operations. It is a deep penetration bomber intended to pave the way for the B-1 Lancer and ultimately, for the massive Cold War era bomber, the Boeing B-52 Strata Fortress. The B-2 Spirit achieves its mission thanks to its unique wing structure which deflects radar, while the paint absorbs the remaining radar signals rather than deflecting them back to their source, enhancing its stealth capabilities. To break it down further, the aircraft is constructed from a combination of materials, titanium, graphite epoxy, fiberglass polyamide, graphite polyamide, and fiberglass epoxy, particularly on the leading edge and wingtips. However, don't be deceived by its seemingly soft outer skin. Beneath the surface lies a robust framework of high-strength steel ribs that allow the wings to flex and bend as needed during flight. To further maintain its stealth profile and reduce its heat signature, the engines are buried deep within the aircraft's body. They draw air from the front and expel only slightly warm air, which prevents this heat-seeking missiles from locking onto the aircraft due to its minimal thermal signature. After three decades, the U.S. has sanctioned the newly developed B-21 Raider is significantly smaller. When placed side by side along with an average human, we can, can notice the difference in size. The new B-21 Raider is expected to utilize advanced stealth technologies to further reduce its radar cross-section, increasing its survivability against modern air defense systems. Moving to the B-2 Spirit's cockpit is compact, with the commander and pilot seated side by side. Interestingly, the aircraft is equipped with ejection seats, when in an emergency the protective covers pop open to allow the crew to safely evacuate the $1 billion aircraft if necessary. Inside the cockpit, advanced avionics systems are present. These include a fuel control system, an attitude display unit, the weapon control systems, and a terrain-following radar. Together, these technologies enable the pilot and co-pilot to navigate and operate the aircraft even in darkness or regions with blind spots area. Speaking of blind spots, you can also look for sources using this tool here for hidden news not seen on the internet. You can get more than 1,000 digital news outlets and will demonstrate how misinformation, media bias, shape the coverage of news like this one. Israel signs $5.2 billion deal to acquire 25 F-15 fighter jets from Boeing. Ground News reports that 68 sources are covering this story. Six lean left, nine on the center, and 11 leaning right. They also have a bias distribution tool to help visualize this. Just below, you will find the factuality rating to ensure the credibility of the sources. We can also look at who owns these news outlets. Here, 38% of the sources are owned by media conglomerates. On the left, Nation of Change frames the sentence as Israel bombs Gaza refugee camps following the $5.2 billion deal. And finally, on the right, first post news reports seven key features of F-15 fighter jets that Israel has decided to buy from U.S. This comparison shows how framing impacts perceptions in news. Ground News is offering my viewers 50% off their unlimited access vantage plan. Use my link or scan the QR code here for the best deal. We will also look into the split rudder system along with the secret stealth paint material composition all in the video ahead. A little history about the B-2 Spirit dates back to the designs of revolutionary engineer Jack Northrup, who invented the flying wing aircraft. This design was first introduced in the year 1949 as the Lai B-49. Unfortunately, it was rejected at the time, but Northrop's fly-by-wire technology laid the foundation for advances in stability systems. These systems allow inherently unstable aircraft like the B-2 Spirit to be flown like conventional aircraft. Let's take a look inside the B-2 Spirit frame structure. At the front is the composite wingtip. This section comprises the ribs of the outer part of the wing. Both integral fuel tanks can hold approximately 167,000 pounds, which translates to about 75,000 kilograms of fuel, which is a significant amount. Just a small comparison, this aircraft's fuel reserve can fill up two tanker trucks, making it an insanely gas-guzzling machine. Moving further back, there is another section of the fuel tank. These fuel tanks were specifically designed to penetrate deep into Russian territory, about 6,900 miles, which is around 11,000 kilometers. Furthermore, it can travel double that distance deep into enemy lines while avoiding radar detection, thanks to this rotary air refueling system that extends all the way out, as shown here. 
This maximizes its range to 12,000 miles with the Boeing KC-135 Strato tanker and allows it to remain airborne for 44 hours. That is almost two days in the air, which is a remarkable engineering feat. All that fuel are consumed by these four General Electric F118 turbofan engines, each with 17,300 pounds of thrust. Let's take a look from the side profile. As you can see, it has its engine buried deep in the airframe with an S-curve in front and behind. This is how it reduces its heat signature. Air is sucked by the fan rotor as it draws in, which undergoes powerful compression in both the low-pressure and high-pressure compressors. As the air enters the combustor, this is where fuel injection occurs. This process generates a continuous combustion of fuel and air, reaching temperatures of more or less than of 1,000 degrees Celsius. The resultant heat causes the gas to expand, leading it to escape from the combustor with high energy, flowing through both the high and low pressure turbines. As a consequence, the turbine blades rotate. The energy liberated by this process drives both the compressor and the fan, thus producing thrust. Just a reminder the B-2 Spirit does not use afterburner, because as a stealth bomber it has to compromise on speed to lower its heat signature. The exhaust from the engines is mixed with ambient air before it exits the airframe. This significantly lowers the temperature of the exhaust, hence reducing the heat signature suitable for this stealth bomber to remain undetected as much as possible. For a conventional aircraft, it has ailerons at each wingtip that move opposite one another to roll the plane. It also has elevators at the tail that affect pitch, and the rudder controls yaw or rotation. However, if we look at the B-2 Spirit, it doesn't have all of those control surfaces like a standard aircraft. You'll notice that there are no leading edge slats. The massive wing, which essentially comprises the entire aircraft, generates enough lift on its own. Instead, the B-2 Spirit has outboard elevons located here close to the split drag rudder, mid-elevons and inboard elevons near the engine exhaust. These control surfaces are located all over this area and move independently as a single unit. They can move opposite one another to achieve roll and work together for pitch control. They also use a combination of both for maneuvers that require some roll and pitch at the same time. As stated, almost every aircraft has a rudder and elevators to turn and stabilize the plane, but the B-2 Spirit has none of these. This is because any vertical structure would reflect radar waves, which is why they had to design it without vertical stabilizer or rudder at the rear. Instead, they use this technique of split drag rudders to provide directional stability and control in a flying wing aircraft. But there is a catch as opposed to conventional rudders, the control efficiency of split drag rudders is typically low for small deflection angles. That is why the B-2 Sprit turns very slowly compared to other military planes. Each split rudder consists of two separate panels that swing out vertically in opposite directions. When the left split rudder opens, it produces drag and causes the B-2 Spirit to yaw to the left in the direction of the open split rudder. The same effect occurs with the opposing right side split rudder. This is what happens inside the cockpit. When the pilot pushes the left rudder pedal, the left split rudder opens, causing the aircraft to yaw to the left. Similarly, when the pilot pushes the right rudder pedal, the right split rudder opens, causing the aircraft to yaw to the right. The B-2 Spirit composite can be divided into several parts. Here, we find that all the edges are made of fiberglass epoxy to reflect radar, while the largest part of the wing is primarily made of graphite epoxy. Interestingly, the crew station assembly is made up of aluminum. At the base, since these areas have to withstand a lot of heat from the engine, they are made of titanium, a super strong, expensive material. Finally, we have fiberglass polyamide, a stealthy material able to withstand heat. This is what it looks like with all the labeling and segments assigned to it to give you a better picture. Let's take a look at the $1 billion radar paint technology, which is still classified, but here's what we know from aviation experts. It involves the use of radar-absorbing material, also called RAM. RAM is a polymer-based material applied to the surface of stealth military aircraft, like the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. Moving to the belly of the beast and opening the bomb bay door is this weapon adapter suspension, which makes this bomber formidable. 
While the Bichu Spirit might look small, it can fit around 80 numbers and mark 82 bombs weighing 500 pounds. Yes, all these 80 weapons can fit inside this weapon adapter, totaling around 40,000 pounds, which is approximately 18,000 kilograms of free-fall gravity weapon system. Depending on the mission, the B2 Spirit can switch to this rotary weapon system, enabling it to carry around 16 numbers of AGM-158 missiles, which can cost around $1.5 million each. When ready, the B2 Spirit can drop this weapon payload discreetly. The AGM missiles unfold their wings to fly towards the target, traveling up to 230 miles, which is around 370 kilometers. Let's take a look at how this works. Step 1. The bomb deployment platform, as previously mentioned, a B-2 stealth bomber flies at a very high altitude. When the aircraft reaches the designated location and the conditions are optimal, it can release this specialized MOAB weapon system. The bomb is designed for precision, and the deployment height plays a crucial role in its trajectory and effectiveness. Then step 2 comes the targeting precision. The bomb is outfitted with advanced guidance technology, including GPS and inertial navigation systems, which are military-grade satellites. Then comes step three, that is adjusting the trajectory. The guidance information and data is then transmitted to the bomb's four lattice motors fins located at the rear. These fins can move and adjust in real time, allowing the bomb to correct its course as it descends under the force of gravity. These adjustments are essential because the weapon does not have thrusters to change its trajectory. Instead, it relies on the movement of these fins and the high altitude drop to control its flight path. This is why the bomb must be deployed from a very high altitude so it has enough time and distance to adjust its trajectory accurately. Here comes the most difficult part that is step 4, impact and penetration. The bomb, known as the Massive Ordnance Penetrator, weighs approximately 30,000 pounds, which is around 14,000 kilograms. When it reaches its target, it strikes with immense force, designed to penetrate deep into hardened structures, such as bunkers. The energy upon impact allows the bomb to bury itself over 200 feet into reinforced concrete, ensuring it delivers its payload precisely where it is intended for maximum effect. But why do we need the B-2 bomber when we have the B-52 Strata Fortress animated in our recent video and the B-1 Lancer? Let's take a look at how this works. The first line attack involves the B-2 stealth bomber moving in to destroy high-value air defense systems like the famous S-400 Triumph and other surface-to-air missiles, effectively disabling them by using its stealth technology. Next, the B-1 Lancer flies at a very low altitude towards enemy targets to take out older anti-aircraft guns and missiles. This clears the way for conventional aircraft like the B-52 Strata Fortress, which can then sweep in to destroy any critical infrastructure without facing anti-aircraft threats. This is the reason they need both the B-2 Stealth Bomber and conventional bombers as there are only 19 units of the B-2 Spirit in service to date. We also make original engineering content, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.